Hey guys, today I'm back in Kerbal Space Program, and I want to try using only nine parts to get to Elu. Now this is going to be my first major minimalist mission, so let's get right into it. So I loaded up in the sandbox here, and the first thing I did was put down this lander can. So I decided just to run with that, and once I had that in place, I needed a fuel tank. Now originally, I like this big fuel tank. It seemed to be proportionally pretty good here, and this is going to be for the bottom stage. Now I put down this mainsail engine on it, and originally this had a really good thrust to weight ratio, but I realized very quickly I'm going to need an even bigger fuel tank to get off Kerbin. So I put down the largest one I could find, and after I did that, I put down a mammoth engine. This should have enough thrust to get it off the ground, but I actually decided to do something interesting. I put down one of these really efficient terrier engines in the tank, and then I put a decoupler, and then I put the mammoth engine. Now the reason for this is as I get into orbit, I don't really care how long a burn will take me, but the mammoth engine is really heavy, so if I have to keep moving that around, it's gonna get really inefficient. So with those in place, I put down a nose cone here, but I actually decided to switch out this really large decoupler for a really small one instead. As far as I could tell, there's really no reason not to do this, and it's a lot later, so it just seemed overall to be a better idea. I started building up a top stage, but I realized I didn't pick up a big enough tank, so I decided to switch it out for this one instead, and with that done, I looked around for engines for a while, and I found the swivel engine was going to be about perfect. Since it's able to swivel side to side, I'll get the gimbling effect, but also it has a really good thrust to weight ratio, so it should be able to get off Elu. Now with that done, want to give it a test on the launch pad here, and things seem to be slightly worse than expected. I've genuinely never seen this before, and I can only assume it's my decoupler I put on the bottom, and it's just really undersized for the job. Now, fortunately, this is a pretty easy fix if I turn on auto strut, and with that done, went back to the launch pad here, and nothing seemed to be bouncing up and down this time, so I wanted to give it a test. Now, launching off worked, but it was really slow. There's no way this is efficient at all, but it's sort of just what I'm stuck with, because there's no more powerful engines that I could use, so at least it somewhat gets off the ground, and with that looking good, I decided to start doing a turn here and building an orbit. Now, once I got up high enough here, you see I cut power to the engine and decided to switch to the small engine instead. I'm already using up almost all the fuel in the tank, so I really wanted to shave this engine as fast as I could, and once I did that, it did turn on, which was good, but it was so painfully slow. I was building my apoapsis really slowly here, and it just was not going to be good enough to really get anything done. But I wanted to just do a test of the top stage here while I was at it, and you can see I launched off the nose cone fine, and also I'm able to fire this one up pretty easily here, so with all this looking good, I wanted to go back to the vehicle assembly building and tune some things up. Now I started here by getting rid of this really big nose cone, going for a smaller one, that's to save a little bit of weight, and after that I switched out my really weak engine for this slightly more powerful one. And once I did that though, you'll also notice I'm offsetting the engines. Now I have to offset them by quite a bit so that the first engine doesn't burn on the second one, and unfortunately this causes some problems, and the rocket doesn't really like that. So at this point, I decided to get rid of my second engine here and just use the mammoth engine. This though is going to give me access to two more parts, and for that, you'll notice I'm putting on these solid rocket boosters. Now, I have to put them right on the tank, and I can't use any decouplers, which is definitely going to be a little inefficient, but I thought I might as well give it a try here, and they should give me a lot more power. But when I gave it a test here, it immediately failed. In fact, it was so quick, I almost didn't notice it. As I tried to take off here, though, for whatever reason, they just decided they didn't want to be attached, and I really don't know why. So I didn't really know what to do here, but I turned on auto strut, thinking maybe that would help, and it actually did seem to. The rocket it didn't fall apart this time, and going off the launch pad, everything seemed to be holding together. And getting off the launch pad, you'll also notice it's a lot faster now. This is going to be really helpful, and it should improve my efficiency a lot. And you can see in the upper atmosphere here, I ended up burning off those rockets, and I started to increase the power of my liquid engine. Now let's just check in some stuff here, and it came back in, and you'll notice that an engine just slipped off. I, like, literally do not understand why that just happened. Nothing changed about the rocket at all. So I decided just to launch it again, thinking it must have been like a one in a million chance. But then my rocket fell apart again, and every Everything was disconnected. So I raised up my solid rocket fuel boosters thinking maybe when they're touching the ground they start getting weird, but this didn't seem to help anything at all, in fact they just fell off in the exact same way. So I tried it again but I lowered them this time, and I really don't have an explanation of why this might be better, but it seemed to work this time. So I gave it a launch, and this is actually my first attempt at the full mission. Now of course getting off the launch pad here is fundamentally the same thing, moving the boosters around didn't really change anything at all, except for the fact that it fails slightly less often. And once I started burning up here, I started to turn, and once I got up to about 20,000 meters, my solid rocket fuel boosters finally burned out, and I launched the liquid engine. This shock, though, seemed to knock off one of the boosters, and at least this time, I kind of understood why it might do that. So I tried to launch again, and I slowly throttled up the engine this time, and that 
that seemed to help the situation. Nothing fell off and I was really happy about that. Now since that actually managed to work, I decided to draw up a save here and I loaded it up just to test if it worked and it didn't really. Once I got back in, you'll notice the booster just immediately fell off. Now this gave me a really interesting idea. What if I just kept loading and waiting till both of the boosters happened to fall off? And I tried this three more times here, but all of the subsequent attempts, the boosters stayed on. So I figured it was probably impossible for both of them to fall off anyway. So I decided to continue up the mission here, but as I got up just a little bit higher, a booster randomly fell off again. I actually do not understand what's going on, but I loaded up the save again here and Finally, things seem to be holding together. Now I'm extending out my orbit here. I actually already set my transfer window and my target is Duna. Now the plan is gonna be to do like eight gravity assists off Duna and launch myself further and further out until I eventually touch Jewel's orbit. Now since Jewel is so much more massive, I should only need a couple gravity assists to finally get to Elu. Now I somewhat miscalculated. So once I set the target, I also set a maneuver here. And once I finally got them touching, it was gonna be really expensive, somewhere around 1600 meters per second to Delta V. And that was kind of a lot here. So I decided to give it another launch and try to get it right. Now ordinarily, I wouldn't have shown you that attempt because I basically completely failed. You notice this time while I was in the atmosphere, I dropped the save while my solid rocket fuel boosters were going. Now I just do this as safety just in case anything goes wrong and eventually something did go wrong and I messed it up and I had to load my save here. But you'll notice once I do this, it finally happened. Both the boosters flew off and I had exactly what I wanted here. I wasn't going to have to tow them around and I didn't have to use decouplers to throw them off. So since that was pretty much perfect, I decided to just drop a save and extend out my orbit once again. Now in another stroke of amazing luck, I happened to time it just about perfectly and my orbit was already almost intersecting Duna's. So with a relatively small correction here, I managed to get an encounter with Duna and with that set up, next thing to do is warp away from Kerbin and do a burn to lock that encounter in. And you can see here, I managed to pull down my periopsis to just below 6 million meters. This was a good start, but I wanted to get a lot closer and really just scrape over the atmosphere. Now the reason for this is the closer you are during a gravity assist, the more energy you'll actually take or give to the planet. And in this case, I wanted to be right about 50,000 meters because the atmosphere starts there. And if I dip in, I'm going to start losing energy to that, which really isn't great. And with that looking good, just warped over to the maneuver node. And once I did that, I need to start turning my rocket. This was actually not a trivial task here because starting to turn it means I'm going to use up electric charge and I don't have an infinite amount of that. So I started to turn up here using the charge, but I ended up cutting off the charge from being used. And once I did that, you can see the rocket is still spinning. And to stop it, I can use the time warp trick and what I mean by this is if you turn on time warp at all it stops rotating your rocket and you can see now I'm locked pretty much where I need to be on the maneuver node and I only need a very small correction to get right on it. So with that done you can see I started to do my burn here and it's actually really cheap. It's only about three meters per second and you can see my projected path going right where I need it to here and you can see now in the distance there so I worked a little bit closer and here I'm doing my scrape right over the atmosphere. Now the one thing I like about gravity is just that I don't have to do anything so I could just get some nice shots here and you can see after I got that done I had to start warping towards Jewel. Now my original plan, like I said, was to do a bunch of gravity assists off Duna, but since my boosters came off, I saved like 800 meters per second of fuel. So at this point, I could actually save myself the trouble and I could go straight to Jewel. Now I would have just done this originally, but since I already had the Duna encounter set up, I figured I might as well start with that here. And at that done, you can see here, I'm extending on my orbit to Jewel. Now this burn is extremely expensive. It's about 2000 meters per second, and it's actually gonna use all of the fuel up in my bottom tank, and I'm gonna have to start using the top tank. So of course, got it pretty far, I used all the fuel in that tank and I launched off the very top stage. Now starting out here, I have 5,000 meters per second of Delta V, which sounds like a lot, but since I'm gonna land on Elu, it's gonna be very limiting in about a second here. And I added on one maneuver node here and this was to tune my orbit. You can see I could pull it a lot closer and now I've got an orbit that extends out really far, but I actually decided to go for this smaller one instead and I'll explain why in a second. Both it all planned out is pretty methodical at this point, just had to warp over the maneuver node, start to do my burn here and you can see the orbit start to pull in in right around Jewel. So now I just had to warp towards it again, and this encounter is actually not going to be that close to Jewel. Now since Jewel is so massive, you don't have to get that close for it to have a really strong effect. So I finished on my flyby here, and as I'm flying away, you can see here why I chose the path I did. I actually already get a second encounter built in, and all I have to do is fine tune it to get a lot closer. This is quite powerful, and you can see now for only 9 meters second of Delta V, I'm getting pretty much exactly the path I need to meet up with Elu. So that plant, of course, <laughs> over the maneuver node, started to do a burn, and once I had that burn finished up here, you can see I'm getting a much closer scrape this time. This 
was kind of done out of necessity, but also I knew it would kind of look good on the video. So I warped in here, and of course it had to happen at night, so that kind of ruined my shot anyway. But I decided to put in a maneuver note here, and I started to tune my orbit with Elu. Now I was already getting pretty close to it, but with not too much work, I actually managed to get a full encounter here, and it was only costing about 73 meters per second. This was pretty cheap, all things considered. So I started to do my burn here, and you can see I had to lower my thruster limit to get the final little bit done, because it was getting really finicky, but I pulled in the orbit to just below 20,000 meters here, and that seemed to be pretty good. So I warped in a lot closer to Elu, and I set up a second maneuver here, and this was to get really close to the surface. Now, of course, to get captured, you want to be as close as possible before you do your burn. So I got that in really tight here, and I was hoping to land on the equator as well. This was kind of preference, but also Elu orbits really quickly, so if they could take advantage of that, it would have been really helpful. So after planning that out here, I pulled in the orbit, and it was time to warp over to Elu. So after that came to view, I set up a maneuver here, and this was mostly out of curiosity to see how expensive it would be to get captured. And it was about 500 meters per second, which was kind of a lot, but it should be okay. So I warped in close, and once I got down to the periapsis, started to do my burn here, and after not very long, I managed to burn all the fuel I needed, and I got fully captured. Now I pulled it in a little bit closer as well, and this is because I didn't want to slam into the surface at over a kilometer a second. So once that was done, warped over the apoapsis, and I started to do a small burn here to just barely touch the surface. I didn't need to pull it in too much, but once I had that touching, I warped in a little bit further, and it was time to try the landing. Now once I fell down to about 2,500 meters, I started to do my first big burn here, and it was because I was getting a little concerned about how much speed I had going to the side. So once I got down to about 80 meters per second, I started to fall a little bit more, and you can see I'm a lot more straight up and down. So I just kept falling and progressively doing a bunch of random burns, and my plan was to fall on my side. Now that sounds a little weird, but there's really no reason for me to fall straight up and down, I also I kind of figured it'd be impossible anyway. But getting on my side was probably fine, because the engine I had was actually really powerful, and since it has that really strong gimbal, I should be able to fling myself up off the ground, and I figured this would be okay. But when I fell here, notice I slowly started to roll, and this prevented me from saving. And I just kept doing this, and I was hoping to reach the bottom of the hill, but it was really, really tall, and it took a long time here, and eventually it got even more steep, and after not too long, my rocket finally exploded, and I lost the fuel tank. So that's gonna make burning fuel a lot harder, so I had to load my save here and try again. Now I thought my original strategy was perfectly fine, I just executed it in a really bad way, so I gave it another test here, but this time as I was falling down, you notice I'm a lot more straight up and down. This really shouldn't have meant anything anyway, but as I fell here, I was on really flat ground, and this happened to allow me to be straight up and down. I've never actually managed to successfully do something like this, so I dropped the save, and after that, I EVA'd very quickly here, and I wanted to plant the flag before anything went wrong. So you can see here, I let go, and I just jumped off the ship, and now I'm planting the flag. Now that finished up here, I jumped right back on the ship, and I was trying to very carefully not knock it over. It seemed to work out, so I grabbed on, I boarded, and you can see now I have about 2,000 meters per second of Delta V to get home. Now you can see here, I'm immediately starting to warp a little bit further, and this is so you get a better encounter with Jewel. My plan is to have Jewel fling me into the inner solar system and have Duna finish up the job. And at this point, I planned it out so I should have been able to just burn east and get away from Elu. So I started this out here, and everything seemed to go really well. You see, I got off the ground easily, and my turning was actually really easy as well. And once I burned away and finally escaped here, I noticed I had burned in the wrong direction, and my escape was going almost into the sun rather than actually going backward. So that was slightly inefficient here, and I had to reload the save and try again. Now, it only occurs to me now that I'm doing the voiceover as well, that I'm actually burning in the opposite direction that I'm rotating, so I'm losing kind of a lot of speed that way as well, but fortunately, it didn't seem to be that expensive of a mistake, and pretty easily here as well, managed to escape here, and I actually was going in the right direction this time. So I warped away from Elu here, and the next thing I needed to do was get that encounter with Jewel. So I waited a very long time here, but eventually I did get a pretty close encounter, but I noticed a small problem. It looked close, but as soon as I tried to use a maneuver on it, it took a lot of moving around to finally get them to touch, and once they did, I was using about 300 meters per second of Delta V to get there. So I decided to wait even longer for a more perfect encounter. This took a long time, but eventually I did manage to get these two close together, and with only 50 meters per second of Delta V, I managed to get right in there. So I just pulled in the orbit, got it fine-tuned right where I wanted it to be, and once I finished that up here, warped over towards Jewel, and you can see it was a pretty close encounter. It wasn't super close or anything, but once that was finished up here, it was pretty much just rinse and repeat. I once again got an encounter with Jewel, and I got myself even further in. Now the plan is to eventually get an encounter that pulls me all the way down to Duna, and then have Duna finish up the job. This took a long time, and you can see here, after I finished up that next encounter, I was still a little bit short, so I decided to do one more encounter around Jewel, and this one, after a little bit of shimmying, I got right on Duna's orbit. So I just did that gravity assist around Jewel again, and now with that done, all I had to do is set Duna's 
the target, and after that, it was an extremely long waiting game to finally get an encounter. I'm not sure why it took such an extremely long time, and the encounter I got wasn't even that good, but I was just gonna take it because I pretty much just wanted something. But fortunately, it was only about 40 meters per second to Delta V to get that encounter. So of course, I pulled it in right above Duna's atmosphere, and with that done, just had to make sure to rotate here and do that burn. Now I'm already down to about 480 meters per second to Delta V, and that's really not a lot. I was getting a little worried that I didn't have enough fuel at this point, but I figured if I just did a lot of gravity assist off Duna, I should be okay. So you can see now just warping over towards Duna, and I did my first gravity assist. Now, unfortunately, this one is at night, so I kind of got terrible footage on this, but I knew there would be a lot more to get some better shots from. So I just had to set Duna as the target again, and you can see now my second assist. This one was a lot better. I went right over this canyon, and I warped away, and almost the entire thing was during the day. So I was really happy with this, but you'll notice I'm still kind of far away, and I'm gonna need to do a couple more encounters here. So I set up an additional one here, and after doing that, I was almost fully touching Kerbin's orbit, so I just did one more encounter here, and this one pretty much entirely got me there. It seemed to barely touch the orbit to get this finished up, so all there was left to do was just wait again, and hopefully get an encounter with Kerbin. I did finally get a close approach, and turned it into an encounter, and once I get it wrapped around here, I got it right above the atmosphere. Now, I didn't want to go in the atmosphere yet, because I was a little concerned about slamming into it at about 4 kilometers a second, but I figured if I was a little bit above it, I should have enough fuel to get this done. So after tweaking that here, you can see approaching Kerbin, and I ended up turning around and starting to do my burn right at the periapsis. Now, I only had 240 meters per second of delta V left, and this was not a lot at all. So as I started to do my burn here, I ended up running out before I got anything that was close to an orbit. So of course, I was a little concerned about that, and I knew I was gonna have to start going into the atmosphere. So I did a really small test at about 69,000 meters. This is just barely entering here, and it wasn't burning up or anything, so I figured I could get a lot deeper, and that was really good news. So this time I pulled it into 53,000 meters, and this was definitely getting pretty deep into the atmosphere. So after I was warping in here, you can see after I got pretty deep in, everything started turning red, and I was getting concerned about overheating, and I decided to do my burn a little early here to prevent any major problems. Now things were heating up a bit, I wasn't getting any overheating warnings yet though, and unfortunately after I started coming out of the atmosphere on the other side, I still didn't have my full orbit, but I was getting really close. So I pulled in my orbit down to 43,000 meters, and I was getting really concerned about overheating, but I pretty much had to do this or else I wasn't going to get captured. And you'll notice the overheat warning is getting very high here, but I did manage to avoid any major problems, and when I went into the map view here, you see I did get captured, and all there's left to do at this point is finish up this burn, wrap around again, do another burn in the atmosphere, and that should capture me. So guys, thanks for watching. I really like doing this minimalism challenge, and I'm thinking of doing some more in the future, because it really requires you to think and plan things out carefully. Now, I did get pretty lucky a few times, especially with the boosters falling off, but I figure if I shave more parts, things could get even more interesting. So if you have any more ideas for future missions, make sure to leave them down below. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them down below as well, and otherwise, until next time.